healed. You are healed. Amen. I remember hearing Brother Hagin say one time that he was ministering to this woman after the anointing had lifted off of him in a service. And she was in a wheelchair. And uh, he set his Bible down in her lap, went back up on the platform, and had it turned to 1 Peter 2.24. And he told her, read it. And she read it. And he said, read it again. And she read it. And he said, read it again. And she read it. And he said, read it again. And he said, all of a sudden, the light come on. And he said, that woman said, bless God, if I was healed, then I am healed. And he said, do you believe it, sister? She said, yes. He said, well, rise up and walk then. And bless God, she got up and walked. And had one, I think she was 18, 18 or 19 years, a woman hadn't even moved her legs and she got up and walked without the help of anybody. Because she saw the light just come on. Amen. Praise God. I see the light come on more now than I ever have. I used to preach for a week in a revival and I might have saw two lights come on. Praise God. But uh, anyhow, I believe the light's on in this house tonight. And I believe what the Lord promised Cyrus that he's going to give us the hidden riches of secret places and cause us to ride out on the high places of the earth. Hallelujah. I'm going to do something tonight I very seldom do. I'm going to preach a one-night message. Praise the Lord. I may eat them words, haven't I? But I, I want you to open your Bibles to two openings tonight. And that one is Hebrews 6 and the other is Romans 5. Hallelujah. And I want to read Scripture out of both of these portions. And I know it's going from back to front, but I want to begin in Hebrews, the sixth chapter. And I want to begin in the 12th verse of that 6th chapter. Praise the Lord. I got up this morning and uh, I tell you I've been booking it. I don't mean speeding, I mean booking. And uh, uh, my sister is a good editor. And when, it, when she sends it back, it's loaded with it. My mistakes, amen. So I have to sit down and go through all of it. Amen. But see, the Lord blessed her with a way to do that. And it, and it sure is a blessing to me. I'd have to send all that out week for weeks for, for it to get back. But see, she, the Lord's made a way. Amen. And I want to read in this 12th verse of the book of Hebrews, the 6th chapter. Praise the Lord. I believe I'm drunk in the Spirit. Every time I come down here to this pulpit, I get thicker and heavier and weightier. Glory to God. That means I, I can preach. I know He'll anoint me if I'm already feeling that. The 12th verse says that you be not slow but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Hallelujah. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. I want to say that again. Men verily swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Amen. Now how many know the only strife isn't just strife between you and another person, but they strife that goes on in that realm in you that's got to cease. Yeah. 
And there's an oath that has already been sworn. I don't mean it's got to be. I don't mean it's something you've got to believe for. I mean it's already been sworn. There's already been sworn out an oath of the Lord Jesus Himself that will put an end to all strife. Glory to God. Silence every voice except the voice of God in your spirit saying this is the way. Walk ye there in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we find out a little on this uh, next verse that God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise. Everybody say, that's me. Yeah. Willing more abundantly to show them the immutability of His counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things well, glory. In which it was impossible for God to lie. Well, hallelujah. We might have a strong consolation. Lord, help us. Why? Because we're they who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have is an anchor of the soul. Both sure and steadfast. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that which entereth in within the veil. Whether the forerunner. Glory to God. Is for us entered even Jesus. Made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And now in Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glo of glory of God but not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Now see, that's a process. Tribulation. Now, now, I want you to get it clear that it ain't just tribulation that produces the glory in it. We glory also in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience, experience. Experience, hope. Yeah. And hope maketh not a shame Amen. because the love of God is shed abroad in our Lord, hearts. Hallelujah. Yeah. By the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But we're going to deal with just the main thought and probably a thousand others. But just to anchor something down here for a focus point, we're going to deal with that oath that God has swore by faith to us that is an end to all strife. And I'm telling you tonight, there is an end to all strife. There has already been put away. That's right. All strife. That's for right. 2,000 years, it's been illegal for man to die. Yes. For 2,000 years, it's been illegal for sickness to reign in our mortal bodies. That's right. For 2,000 years, we've had the, the ability to walk in a level of Him yeah. where no disease can live in these bodies. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise Lord. And you say, Well, why ain't we doing it? And I'll tell you why. Because we've got to catch hold of it in the realm of faith. Yeah. Holy Ghost faith. Anointing faith. Faith in us that we don't muster up of our own accord, but faith in us that flows through and by the Holy Ghost. You might know if I was going to get to preach just one message what it'd be on. Faith. Amen. But anyway, I want to get in this and I want us to see that you all know this. I preached 50 something messages to the, in here, spent a year teaching every verse out of the book of Hebrews. Amen. And uh, it's 300 and something verses, 13 chapters, and we went through all of them. And you know that the name is 
as important as the book is. Because the name Hebrews means to pass it over into something better. When Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, and I know Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, not a question in my mind as to whether he wrote it or not. He was writing to a people who were feeling the, 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 the pressure to move into a greater dimension. Amen. And he was writing to tell them that as they press forward, they must pass over that old order and pass over into a better way. Thus it becomes the book of better things, better blood, better priesthood, better covenant, established on better principles and better promises. So when we come to the first and second chapters of the book of Hebrews, it is the unveiling of how securely we're positioned in the heavens with the Lord Jesus. We're not written to anymore as little babes. We're told without a shadow of a doubt our positioning in Him. We're told that there is a risen exalted order and we've been called to walk in it, to live in it. We're told that God who at sundry times and in diverse manners as spoken by the prophets and the Amplified says in parts, pieces, not in the fullness, but in portions, God gave truth. But that in these last days He has spoken unto us through His Son who is the express image of His person. Somebody say amen. And how many know that in that Son dwells the fullness of the God and body. So God ain't speaking in portions and, and pieces anymore, but He's revealed all things to us in Jesus. Amen. And Christ is the Son, S-U-M, Son of all spiritual things. We don't seek an experience, we seek a person. Right. All faith is in Jesus. All life is in Jesus. All healing is in Jesus. So we're not ever praying and grasping at straws here and straws there. If we seek the kingdom glory of God and He's the kingdom, then everything, everything falls in His proper perspective and place. And your life begins to come in alignment with a total perfect plan. And I'm living testimony to you that when you're in that kingdom perfect plan, nothing can move you out of that plan. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Nothing can move you out of that plan. Who shall separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus? How can death can't do it? Tribulation can't do it. Peril and famine can't do it. Even death Glory to God is unable to separate us from the love of God. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. So in coming in alignment with where He is and who He is, I don't have to have a heavenly mind to do yes. that. Glory. Because He's been anointed because He loved righteousness and hated iniquity. He's been anointed with the oil of gladness above all of His fellows. And I'm telling you tonight that you under the headship of Jesus who is the head of the church have been blown down upon by the heavenly anointing of a heavenly priesthood, of a heavenly faith, and a heavenly order and you walk in this earth as citizens of the heavenly world. Everything He is flows through you. All that He is is being revealed and manifested in you. Amen. Now Paul knew what the saints needed so he prayed it in Ephesians 3. He knew the saints needed to comprehend. What is the length? What is the breadth? The depth and the height. So the prayer is not that you get to that place, but that you comprehend right. oh, that was the yeah. where you sit in That's Him. Because once you realize where you are in Him, there's things that bother you now that won't never bother you anymore because you won't even hear them. Right. Because all you can hear is that that flows by and through the Spirit. And that is the end of all strife. There's no striving in that realm. That word strife in the Greek means there's no reluctance. There's no resistance on your part. Oh, hallelujah. God speaks it, and without any resistance, you believe it. Amen. It's just that easy for you to believe it. Because you have been anchored in such a promise that's unfailing, immutable, and can never fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Jesus said to Simon Peter, 
Satan hath desired to have thee, that he may sift thee as wheat. But I prayed for you, glory to God, that thy faith, oh, glory to God, fail thee not. Come on. And without any doubt that his faith would not fail him, turn right around and said, And when you are converted, <laughs> Right. Meaning when you do get back over here where I want you to walk, strengthen the rest of your brethren and lift them up. Glory to God. He didn't say if you are converted. He said when you are converted. And how many can testify tonight that no matter what journey and what side path you may take, you always come back to that place in Him. The reason you do is because it's His purpose that's driving you. Moving you. Glory to God. So it's my impression that the last half of this sixth chapter of the book of Hebrews is a faith that is mature and completely unshakable and unmovable. Now in these first two chapters, the second chapter he quotes from Psalms 8 talking to us. The first chapter he glorifies Christ. The second chapter he glorifies the corporate man. The glory to God. The many members son by saying to him, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? But in the transpiring of this faith journey, when we come to the third chapter, we read about the children of Israel, and how for 40 years, 3 million people did do nothing but see God do miracles all day, all night. Every time they woke up, miracle, manna on the ground. Every time they went to bed, miracle, pillar of fire. Every time they walked through the desert, miracle or a cloud. Well, glory to God. And if you stop and look at your life, you'll find out that you're just like them. All along your path is strong miracle. You should have failed, but you did. You could have died, but He saved you. You could have lost this, but He saved you from losing it. You could have, you could have not had them, could not, not even been in church tonight serving you. But you see how the whole path is strewn with miracles. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Everywhere you turn, you can see where God has blessed you. Move. We in this church can look around here and see the blessings of God. We can see people's faces who have testified to the healing touch of God. To the financial blessings of God. To the family problem solver. Hallelujah. Yeah. And to the way maker who wakes, makes ways where there seemeth to be no way. Glory to God. Oh, Yet every time a new burden or a new need arose, these three million people had no confidence in God whatsoever. In fact, Every time their need arose, Moses almost had to duck his head. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to stone him. These same people who had been healed eternally to walk for 40 years without a swollen foot and without a hole in their garment. They stayed supernaturally young for 40 years. How many hears what I'm saying? Amen. Kept by the power of God. Yet every time a need or tribulation arose, they, they could not trust Him. Even though He had took them that far, yeah. somehow in their heart, they thought God could drop them after He took them. Well, I want to preach just 30 seconds tonight and tell you, God ain't never dropped nobody. He's never left nobody. He's never forsaken nobody. He don't leave people out and play with their head just to leave them alone to cry in their weakness. If he started this thing, he'll complete this thing. He that begun a good work will be faithful to perform it in you. Hallelujah. God don't leave people out to let them die. He leads them out that he may bring them in to something greater, something better, and something mightier. Hallelujah. These people's attitudes stuck. They got very hateful. They got very, uh, 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 you know, their indignation level was intolerable. At one point, God, thank God we're under grace tonight and not under the law. At one point, God opened the earth up and swallowed 20,000 of them in one gulp. Not because they were out getting drunk and dancing with wild women, but because 
they were speaking evil of the God who had kept them and, and, and kept them alive and blessed them. And so the, the point is in Hebrews 3 we're told why the Bible says that God was grieved with that generation for 40 years. And the only thing that grieved him was they didn't have the faith to believe that he who brought them out would carry them the rest of the way. Amen. Glory to God. Their feeling was, I could have something better than this, and since I don't, I'm not going to praise God or worship God or serve Him or have faith. Well, let me tell you something. We all, Brother Britton said, glory to God, he was in this little old church, it was tore up, didn't have no money, barely was making it, selling stuff, insurance, I think, on the side, Nobody wanted to come hear what he had to say. They was all against his doctrine. He was the first man that really ever brought sonship message publicly and wrote about it. They were all against him. And to top it all off, he was trying to preach the kingdom word in Springfield, Missouri. My God. And, and everybody was against him. And he was out there. And he said he got so bitter and so cold. And, and, and the reason why is he knew he could have had better but he wasn't patient enough to believe that God would bring him into a certain timing when everything he needed would be provided. Let me tell you something. The Bible said he patiently endured until he obtained the promise. But I'll tell you one thing about God. He may not do it all the best right now what you think's the best, but he'll make it sweet every step of the way. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. He does nobody nothing but good. And to say anything else is to tell a blatant outright lie, folks. God is a good God. He's a merciful God. He's long-suffering to us when he thank God he is. He remembers that we are but dust, honey. Because if he did when we got in our, our little situations where we didn't think we could trust him, he would he'd give up on us. But he don't give up on nobody. My God, he's long-suffering. He'll pair right along with you and believe that you are going to come back up to the place in him where you know that it's going to be all right. Somebody say praise Hallelujah. 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 So these children of Israel grieved him. And he said, I don't care how bad they grieve me. I'm swearing it out right now. Somebody say oath. Hallelujah. There's an oath that greater than me and you. Even when we would sit down, we can't. When we would get out of it, we can't. Oh God, many as a day it'd been easier to just sit down. And done something else. But Lord Jeremiah said, I can't lay on this bed no more. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Right. Oh, I feel the love tonight. And so, God said, I grieve with them. But He said, I'm not letting the grieving of that cancel out my oath. My oath is immutable. And I swore and I won't repent. Somebody is going to enter into my rest. Somebody is going to enter this faith that all the all the strife's going to cease. All the struggle's going to be over with. Glory to God. He swore it and would not repent that there was a people in this earth that was going to come into a place of faith in Him where they never did move out of it again. They would be eternally secured in a place of believing Him and it would be like Abraham was on Mount Moriah. All experience would turn into hope Hope would not make it a shame and he could go up there with his only son not even sure about what the process was to get him back. He said, if I have to raise him, I'll raise him. But I, hallelujah, but I know that, I, that, that this thing is going to work. It's not going to fail. This hope is greater than I am. This hope is greater than the heavens. This hope is greater than the earth. What hope? It's the oath of God Himself that when He could swear by no greater, He swore by Himself. By himself. Well, glory to God. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm, I'm getting somewhere, I promise you. In the 
when you when you get this stuff in your spirit, you just can't jump up and skip over it because you know that's the process by which you get into it. The fifth chapter, he tried to show us and tried to show the people a greater step of faith to believe that they were kept by an endless priesthood, a life of a priest and a great high priest at that that would never run out. But when he tried to talk to them, that was it. That was as far as he could get with them. And he had to rebuke them and say they were dull of hearing. And the word dull is the same word we started with in reading tonight when it said that you be not slothful. But followers, slothful and dull is the same word in the Greek. And let me tell you, it's a strong word. It means sluggish, lazy, and stupid. That's what the Greek word means. And it, it is the root word, by the, or the root word of that word, uh, 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 slothful, is the same word for bastard in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, where the people said that if they couldn't endure the chastening of the Lord, thereby were they bastards and not sons, meaning that they were not submissive to the Father's plan because whenever He tried to align them with it, they fought against Him. And because, see, that's that strife. They had a rebuttal. They had a refute against what God was doing. Well, we don't have that option. Amen. I guarantee you I don't have any other option than to do what I'm doing right now. I don't have no other option. I was marked for this in my mother's womb when she standing in this very room with me in her womb. Preachers was, tell, was already uh, 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 declaring what I would be and do before I ever got in the earth. I mean, I didn't stand a chance to want to do anything yet. I was marked before birth, but greater even than that, I had an ordination in Him before the world was. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God's not playing with this thing. His oath is greater than my will, my want to, my desire. If I get up on Monday and don't want to, God's bigger than my don't want to. If I get up on Monday and I just don't want to fool with it today, God's greater than my don't want to. He'll keep me. He'll carry me. If I can't walk, He'll carry me. If all I do is crawl, He'll crawl with glory to God. Do you believe it tonight? And I and I believe if I if, if I got the sun out in me. He'd prick me good and make me get back up on my feet and say, this ain't where it ends. You're going all the way. And that's what the Lord is saying to us tonight. The oath is that people are not going to be slain in the middle of this process, but all the way until they're perfected in the faith, they're going to be pushed and driven by the Holy Ghost of God until they walk in to a place in Him where there is no permanence, no shadow of turning, but every good and perfect gift. Amen. So, having introduced that message, God help us. This passage dealing with this oath comes through a time of completely manifested faith. Hallelujah. That was shown up in this earth in a man called Abraham. And I'm referring to that Genesis 22 again because this is when the Lord actually announced the oath. It was not in the beginning of Abraham's journey, but it was when he stood perfected in faith on that Mount of Moriah. Because from the 12th chapter of the book of Genesis, he was in a journey of faith. Wow. He was being led from one revelation to the next. He did not receive the complete unfolding of God's plan. He was told to get up and leave everything he knew without one directive word as to where he was to go. The best God could offer him was into a land that I will show thee. That's right. That's right. Then when he got out of that and it looked like he had overcome that obstacle, it hit him again. Now get out of your kindred. Glory to God. Don't go back and see them no more. Don't go back and listen to them no more. Get, 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 leave your kindred. There are seven separations that Abraham went through. He had to leave his, 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 his country. He had to leave his kindred. He had to be separated from Lot. He had to be separated from monetary wealth. He had to be separated from Egypt. He had to be separated from Ishmael and finally he had to be separated from Isaac and when that cord was broken he knew that everything he had he had by the Holy Ghost everything he had he had by the faith of God in him nothing natural had produced this thing there was no answer for it in the reality of the natural but in the supernatural it was all accounted for every dime was paid 
Every promise was fulfilled. It was yes and amen to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Better turn me down just a little. Amen. Glory. So, dealing with moving away from this slothful, the Amplified Bible translates slothful as being disinterested. Praise God. And isn't that what we do? When we don't want to press on and fight forth in faith, you get disinterested. But how many of you know that the Spirit ain't going to let us stay disinterested? He's going to make you feel Him. He's going to make you know He's going to talk to your spirit. Glory to God, whether you want Him to or not, He's going to whisper inside you. And you know, some days, if I waver, it's in my head. It ain't in my heart. It's not in your heart either. It's in your head. And when that head gets to wavering, even all that loud talk in your head, the deep down inside of your inside, don't you always know it's going to be all right? Hallelujah. Don't you always know that God ain't going to fail you? Don't you always know that there's no such a thing? Hallelujah. And as him not doing what he said he would do. Sure you do. Because the head is unfaithful. But the heart, he that is joined unto the Lord, is one spirit. Amen. Well, hallelujah. I'm feeling good now. I feel that anointing. You can't be separated when you're one. And you, your head may do a lot of talking. But Lord God, your heart knows. Knows in whom you believe. Amen. So, the one thing about faith is it never quits. Now, I want to teach you something else. It never quits. It never gives up. It's radical. Sometimes it's overbearing. Sometimes you're tired. And faith ain't tired. Hello, old church. Glory to God. Sometimes you want to go slow and faith wants to go fast. It's fanatical at times. Making you think after you stepped out in it, Lord, what did them people think about me? Hello? Sometimes it's wild, downright wild, brother. It does things that the natural man could never handle a thing to do. But one thing is, it's constantly repetitive. Faith is a repetitive thing. It has to be. We have to be kept sharp in faith. And so faith is repetitive, meaning it thumps and thumps and thumps. It's sure. It'll never leave your spirit. Amen. It's, 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 it, real faith is tenacious and violent. Wow, that's the truth. Crazy stuff. Oh, hallelujah. Make you do stuff you never would have dreamed to do. Make you lay hands on the car dash when it's about to quit. I've done it, church. Praise God. Hallelujah. One lady come up to me before I ever got driving license and I was getting revivals here and there and she said, I want to drive you to all your meetings. And she had a wonderful heart and a wonderful spirit, but she had a bucket of bolts. And that car wasn't no good. And we drive. I was running the meeting. That first meeting I ever ran was in Wachula and an orange grove in a church in an orange grove and it went for uh, I don't care how long, six, seven weeks. And we was down, going down there every night. And every night we'd get to a certain spot in the road and that car would make a noise and everything in it would go to clanging. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'd lay my hands on that dash and say, in the name of Jesus, you won't break down with us in it because we're going on a purpose. We're going to, oh, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It'll make you do crazy things. It'll make you grab people up and can't walk and run with them. Yeah. One night in this church, it made me get a hold of somebody that had a back situation that they had to help them get into church and set them down on the back row. But that faith got overbearing in me and I couldn't sit still no more. And I went and just got the, the fellow by the hand and started walking him. Amen. Till he could walk again. Yeah. It'll do things. And I want to tell you something. I miss that kind of faith being manifested in service. We got to have some more of that church. We got to have some more of it. Praise God. I'm coming down to back here. Excuse me while I fix these 
suspenders. Amen. Amen Thank God there's two of them back there and not just one. Amen, Hallelujah. I'd be high in the front, low in the back. But I... <laughs> Glory. But I, I'm going to tell you something. Radical faith. Unreal faith. Yeah. Faith that's so so radical that everybody that ain't moving in the realm of it gasps when they see you go forth in it. Oh, glory to God. You want the Pentecostal church to quit their shouting? Let somebody get up in faith to get a cripple out of a wheelchair. Everybody will hush. Some of them will hush because they're in their heart they're saying, in the name of Jesus, let it be. Others will hush saying, in the name of Jesus, don't let it fail. Preach it better than your shouting. I saw cripples walk as long as you'd hold a chair behind them. But the minute they thought that chair was gone, they suddenly were just as crippled. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Yeah. In that meeting we had him watch you look. I watched God open the eyes of a blind woman that was absolutely, totally, teetotally blind in both eyes. She had done been to blind school. She had on blind glasses. She had a red and a white cane. She was getting a check from the Blind Association. And in five minutes after praying, I said, if you, do you believe God? He, she said, I know he did. I said, well, if he healed you, you'd have them glasses off, wouldn't you? Looking around. And she pulled them glasses off, and the first thing she looked up and saw her pastor's wife sitting on the platform, and she about run me over. I didn't have to ask her if she was healed. She about run me over to get to that pastor's wife. And they hugged and cried the rest of that uh, service till we dismissed. And she walked out of there and left that stick and them glasses on the altar. And her husband was deaf in one ear and he got healed watching her get healed. We didn't need to pray over him. He just got healed watching her. And that woman come back two or three nights and she testified. And then all of a sudden I got to missing her. And I started to wonder where was that woman at. And finally I asked somebody that I knew, knew her where she was at. And they said, Brother Max, she's as blind today as she was in Africa. And I said, well, what happened? She said, well, they got talking and said they couldn't live without that check. And she didn't know what she was going to do without that blind check. And they talked that and said every day they talked it, she got a little darker and a little darker and a little darker. You said, well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't need your belief. It's already happened, so I know it happened. And what was it? And I'll tell you what it was. She had more confidence in that check than she did in the power of God that healed and opened her blind eye. But I'm going to tell you, we're getting back to it, to, it, to preaching this stuff and believing this stuff. You're going to see some people do some radical things, some extraordinary things, and when they do, for God's sakes, accept what the Lord is doing and thank Him that somebody believes we're coming into an hour of manifestation where we're going to see some marvelous and some glorious things happen in the name of the Lord. And, and, and let me tell you this, if somebody ever approaches you in mighty faith, for God's sakes, don't sit there scared to death of what they're going to do to you. If I thought God was going to heal me, I wouldn't care if they shook my head. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that's the way God would choose to do it, but I'm saying if he does, let her shake. Let God be God. This is an oath we're dealing with made by God himself that puts an end to cancer and puts an end to arthritis and puts an end to insanity and puts an end to depression and puts an end to despondency. It's an oath. It can't fail. Somewhere in our walk, it has to take effect and start operating. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. It's an immutable oath. It cannot be disputed. God cannot lie. His promises are true. And somewhere we're going to have to start seeing the effect of the faith of God that's on the inside. Hallelujah. Now, faith brings an end to all hope. By the word end, I mean completion. And so the process of development is what we read in Romans, the fifth chapter. There's build up of the Holy Ghost. There's a build up of Holy Ghost pressure that causes a mighty work of the Spirit to flow through us and out of us. So the Scripture said we're justified by faith. Yeah. Then He said we've obtained peace through that same faith. Then He said we have access by faith. Yeah. Then we stand by faith. Now anchored 
in such positions, then the scripture says we're able to rise and rejoice in hope. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you what the word hope means. The word hope means to anticipate with pleasure. Oh, glory to God. Glory to, God. to anticipate with pleasure. It means confidence and the ex expectation of something good. Oh, Let me ask you something. Do you find yourself sitting around just expecting something bad? Just expecting the negative? Oh yes, I'll probably lose this. I'll probably fall when I go up. I've heard people uh, just cause it rain a little bit said, I'll probably fall. Yeah, you probably will. You probably have to send somebody out there to get you up. You prophesied it before you ever hit the ground. Hello, church. I'll probably break down. I know it. You might as well call the tow truck before you leave the house. Tell them to stay on call so they can meet you. I'll tell one old brother Dees. We was out and got in the boat one day at the Lake Surveyors to go fishing. And they'd had trouble with a starter on the boat a little bit on the motor. And he had finally got it to start. And we got across the lake. And when he turned it off, he made, just made the simplest little statement. He said, probably won't never start again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And bless your heart, it didn't start. No <laughs> but we had a trolling motor. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We didn't, didn't stop her. So we fished all day and then come in with a, a trolling motor. But hallelujah. I mean, and Brandy instantly said, said, you hush your mouth that you spoke over our boat. And it never did turn over another time. Praise the Lord. And he said it himself. said, well, I snared it with a word to my own mouth. And I said, well, that's all right. Amen. But, but, but I'll tell you, you can't do all that snaring because you ain't always got a trolling motor. I'm not talking about boats now. I'm talking about believing God. Hallelujah. And it's just that way. Faith is the big motor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Lord, I feel that all over me. Faith is a big motor, folks. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't want to have to paddle my way back in. I don't even want to bump along with a trolling motor. I want them to see me coming in with that big motor wide open. Don't you? Well, glory. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you now that it's the expectation of something good. Amen. Glory to God. You know, we, we, you know what makes us expect the bad, don't you fear? We're afraid of what it's going to be before we ever get there. We're more afraid of the unknown than we are the known. Amen. The Bible even said not to fear fear. Yeah. It does say be not afraid of the sudden fear nor the desolation. Well, go. I ain't swinging no chandelier, but you're getting some meat tonight. Amen, sure. brother. Now, in some cases in the Bible, when it says hope, it means that you hope in spite of. In spite of everything around you, you hope anyway. Well, glory to God. This is seen in Romans 4, chapter the 18th verse when it said Abraham against hope believed in hope. Well, glory. Wow. There was nothing physically visible. Let me tell you something about God promised something. He don't make no checklist of what you got or don't got before he makes a promise. He'll step out and tell Abraham he's going to be the father of all nations. And not only has he not got a son, he ain't got the ability to produce one. And not only has he got, got the ability to produce one, he don't even have an heir. Hello? And then if he could produce it, she can't conceive what he could produce. Look like the Lord would have checked with him on that. That's like God telling you to do something and you know you ain't got no money in the bank to do it with. Do you know God might tell you to give $100 and you ain't even got $5? Right. Sure, He don't check with you on these things. He just declares what it shall be. And if you've got faith in what He promised, listen to me, church. It ain't up to you to produce it. It ain't up to you to provide it. It ain't up to you. If you think you're doing it, then that means you ain't got a lick of 
trust in the Lord. The only people that trust the Lord get out of His way and believe Him that it's going to be alright. If you're trying to get in the middle of it because you're afraid it won't work out, it means you don't believe God. You don't trust Him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. I got faith right now that if I want there not big things, so don't get to your mind to wondering what I'm going through. I ain't going through nothing. I just I just got a little few things I'd like to have. Glory to God. Don't you get anybody besides me got a vision? Amen. Got some dreams? And they bigger than you are. And they supposed to be that big. God made you to dream that big. God made you to envision bigger things. You praise the Lord. Ain't nobody wants to stay in a, in, in a house and needs fixing up without fixing it up. Nobody wants to drive a car tore up. They want to fix it. It's okay for you to want them things. God give you the ability to dream. Somebody say amen. He give you the power to have a vision. Don't be afraid of your vision. If there ain't no vision, the people perish. If a pastor ain't got a vision for his church, that church ain't going to do it. It's just going to stay right where it's at. It won't move nowhere spiritually. There won't be nothing happening. It'll dry up and get dead, and nobody won't feel anything. But if he's got a vision, glory to God. Every time he gets up, he's pushing for something. He's pushing, headed for something. He, you never are supposed to see where you are now. You're supposed to always envision where you're going to end up. Now, if you get to envision in where you are now, you'll hang your heart upon the willow. But if you start looking on the side, hallelujah. Well, glory to God. I don't know whether I've helped you or not, but I've preached me happy in that. Glory to God. I don't look at the things which are seen. Because the things which are seen are temporal. Thank <laughs> you. 
money hoaxer. If I said it, it's the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you now, there's money miracles being loose right now. 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 And don't go trace down where it come from or how it got there. Just say the Holy Ghost done it. Just say the Lord made it. You can't explain the stuff God does. Just accept it. Thank Him for it. Thank Him right now in advance. Oh my God. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him in advance. Sister Alexander went here and she was just a poor widow 
and she lived in a little house and babysat it here and there to make money. And I'll tell you, that woman was all the time going to the bank and finding out that somebody went in the bank and put to her three hundred dollars. She wouldn't even know who done it. How many remember her testifying? She'd get up just she wouldn't take long. She wasn't no loud person. She was just she'd stand up and tell it just the way it was and then sit down and she'd say, I just want to thank the Lord that I went and had to put uh, get some money out of the bank today. Glory to God. And said somebody and I don't know who put three hundred dollars in my account. And I don't know what she tell me she didn't oh, ever drive and she had never had driven and she push a little uh, cart around with uh, rates and what have you in it and different ones that hire to keep her their flower beds up and pay her a little bit and with her having that willingness yeah. to go forth and in the faith to believe right. God take care of the rest. Yeah. Lord God, he was yeah. good to that little woman. Amen. And you know what? Hallelujah. I follow the power cause I uh, I said a while ago that flowers are going to get bigger than anybody's in town. It was Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want my yard to look Holy Ghost. Feel like man. Don't you? But anyway, I was thinking about how you could drive by her house, that little old house. And I believe all she had to do was just accidentally drop something and it blew them on the ground. She might not. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That was the Holy Ghost yard. Yeah. Everywhere you look, there's a, there's a big old cluster of blooms on flowers. Her whole yard looked like a rainbow. Glory to God. Some of you know her. You know what I was talking about. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I thought, my God, how he took care of that woman. Glory. And I tell you what, hallelujah. Are, are not you much more than one of these? Oh, you yeah. little face. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Glory to Glory God. Lord. Hallelujah. I want Sue to get practiced up and sing to us one night coming up if I clothe the little lily. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Know ye what I shall perfect you as I am. Oh, hallelujah. One more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for healing you. Thank Him for providing for you. And say it out loud, God's moving for me right now. He's moving for me right now. Oh, hallelujah. I'm not waiting till tomorrow. I'm going to turn it loose tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God.